uh, uh, first and a second, uh, and then we'll take a roll call to come out. Is everyone okay to start streaming? Yes. Yes. Okay. I now need a motion to. Okay. I now need a motion to come out of executive session. So, so moved. moved. Trustee Tobin, second. Trustee Fiegel. Discussion. Roll call to come out of executive session. Mrs. Coder, please. Trustee Fiegel. Yes. Trustee Hare. Yes. Trustee Kershaw. Yes. Trustee Lambalter. Yes. Trustee Pratt. Yes. Trustee Sandell. Yes. Trustee Tobin. Yes. yes. Trustee Young. Yes. <laughs> She gave us the thumbs up. Yes. We are out of executive session. The uh, next item on our agenda is a Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone must stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> and I will lead tonight. I pledge allegiance. To the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you guys. Mrs. Coder? Trustee yes. Fiegel? Here. Trustee Hare? Here. Trustee Kershaw? Here. Trustee Lambalter? Here. Trustee Pratt? Here. Trustee Sandell? Here. Trustee Tobin? Here. Here. Vice President Young? Here. Here. President Linderman? Here. Next item on our agenda tonight, we have the approval of the proposed agenda and the approval of the proposed minutes for the work session meeting of February 5th. 2020 and the regular meeting of February 26th, 2020. I need a motion, please. Motion. Oh, moved. Just for the proposed agenda, right? Just, I'm sorry, just for the proposed agenda. Yes. Motion, please. Motion. Uh, Trustee Pratt, second. Trustee Fiegel. Discussion. Roll call. Trustee Fiegel? Aye. Trustee Hare? Aye. Trustee Kershaw? Aye. Trustee Lambalzer? Aye. Trustee Pratt? Aye. Trustee Sandell? Aye. Trustee Tobin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. President Linderman? Aye. Motion is carried. Now I do need approval of the proposed minutes for the work session meeting of February 5th, 2020, and the regular meeting of February 26th, 2020. I need a motion, please. So moved. Uh, Trustee Kershaw. Second. Second. Trustee Pratt. Discussion. Roll call, Mrs. Coder. Trustee Siegel? Aye. Trustee Hare? Aye. Trustee Kershaw? Aye. Trustee Lambalzer? Aye. Trustee Pratt? Aye. Trustee Sandell? Aye. Trustee Tobin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. President Linderman? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. We are now moving on to action items and business matters. One through seven. Trustee. We are doing one through seven, and then we will do nine through 13. We will do eight for the adoption of the budget separately. 
I need a motion to approve one through seven. So moved. Oh, Trustee Kershaw. Second. Uh, Trustee Young. Discussion. Trustee. Discussion. Roll call. Trustee Beagle. Aye. Trustee Hare. Aye. Trustee Kershaw. Aye. Trustee Lambalzer. Aye. Trustee Pratt. Aye. Trustee Sandell. Aye. Trustee Tobin. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. President Linderman. Aye. Motion is carried. I now need a motion to approve nine through 13. Okay. Trustee Tobin, second. So, oh, second. <laughs> Trustee Hare, <laughs> discussion. Roll call, Mrs. Cordes. Trustee Fiegel. Aye. Trustee Hare. Aye. Trustee Kershaw. Aye. Trustee Landwalter. Aye. Trustee Pratt. Aye. Trustee Sandell. Aye. Trustee Tobin. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. President Linderman. Aye. Motion is carried. I now need a motion to approve number eight, adopt the 2020 2021 expenditure budget and approve submission of the property tax report card. Motion, please. So moved. Trustee Hare, second. Second. Trustee second. Wendell, I am now opening it up for discussion. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Bradley um, to open the discussion on the budget. Thank you, President Linderman. Uh, we'll start the discussion by reviewing where we are with the proposed expenditure budget for 2020 2021. All board members were provided several documents that Ms. Coder will walk us through. And uh, following that exercise, we will, I'll turn it back over to you, President Linderman, for a discussion. Okay, uh, Ms. Coder? Thank, thank you, you, Superintendent Bradley. So does everybody have, there should be five colorful documents in front of you. You can just thumbs up if everybody has them. Thumbs, thumbs, trustee, okay, trustee here. I can't see trustee Fiegel. Giving me a thumbs up. Okay. All righty. So two weeks ago, we presented to the Board of Education an expenditure of budget in the amount of $106,324,081. If you look at your budget adjustment worksheet, which is the one you're familiar with, you will see where it says budget adoption March 25th, 2020. That is what the board was comfortable with two weeks ago. It did involve using additional appropriated fund balance of $1,939,884. So that would be the second line under budget adoption, March 25th. When you follow it all the way to the right, it will show the amount over or under the limit is now zero. And that's where you needed to be. Now your revenue picture, that's this other colorful document. It just shows that you're at uh, zero over the tax levy. What I would like to call your attention to now are items that the facilities committee, the facility, sorry, audit committee reviewed on March 11th. And that's um, this document. Let's see it. So it's titled for you to put under your district reserves tab. Does everybody have that? Thumbs up, please. Thumbs up, got thumbs up. Okay. So when you look at this, uh, what we do is we look at what our estimated fund balance would be for this upcoming June 30th 
2020. We start out with where the fund balance was at June 30th of 2019. And that's the top block. And you'll see it was 32 million $285,924, for which on July 1st of this year, the Board of Education made a commitment to use $2,680,713 from reserves to lower the tax levy and $2,302,581 from to add to appropriated fund balance to lower the tax levy. Bringing the adjusted fund balance this year on July 1st, 2019 to $27,302,630. Are there any questions on that block there? Thumbs up if everybody's good so far. Thank you. So now that is the starting point as of July 1st in this current fiscal year. Now what the district does and what the audit committee sees is we do a cash flow and it's month by month. And I have given you a copy of that. It's a front and back. So the numbers you're going to see, for instance, add total projected revenues. That's $104,040,012. That does include the $2,000,000. $591,602 we received this year from our Smart School Bond Act reimbursement. Then we will subtract out our total projected expenditures. This is where we uh, take current that we know of and then we project out for the remainder of the year. That amount is $99,392,000. $627. Originally, audit committee had authorized an equity contribution for a bond refinancing of $895,000. With the market the way it is currently, our bond council and fiscal advisor have advised the district now is not a good time to refinance. So the 895,000 has been added and taken away from expenditures. So now you would look at your estimated fund balance at June 30th of 2020 is estimated to be $31,950,015. All right, everybody good so far? Thumbs up, thumbs, trustee hair, thumbs. No? I don't know what we're looking at. <laughs> okay. Are you on the, that says district reserve tab. Are you on that one? This is estimated fund balance projection for year okay. end. All right. Yes, now I am. Now you are, so you can see the pink highlight box for expenditures. And then you go down to, that's the 31,950,015. You got that? Okay. So that's where we as a district project we are going to end at this upcoming June 30th, 2020, all right? So then from there, the audit committee will be faced with decisions on how much of the $31,950,015 do they want to leave in their reserves or add to reserves or take out of reserves. So you'll see the reserve list tax certiori, the debt um, reserve for repairs, you see all of them listed there. Some of the reserves have to stay intact because by law, they are only allowed to be spent for certain reasons. For instance, the capital reserve can only be accessed if there's a valid capital voter approved capital project authorizing to use those reserves. The, for instance, reserve for um, ERS, employee retirement and TRS, those can only be accessed if we're using them to uh, 
offset in expense in the expenditure fund next year. So the dollar amounts listed there currently are the dollar amounts that have to stay in tax. But now we'll go, so the total reserves, 22,563,967. Everybody see that? Thumbs up. Okay. Now let's look at the green box where it says unreserved appropriated for taxes. That's 3,320,257. That includes the original 2,000,004 that we were going to use all along plus the $1,017,676 that the audit committee authorized in order to balance the budget. And then it includes, um, so that's where we're at with that one. So it brings what we're giving back to the taxpayers out of what we feel we're getting at June 30th. We're giving them back 3,320,257, okay? That will, and then unreserved, undesignated is $6,065,791. Now, the law allows districts to maintain 4% of the coming year's budget to carry over for expenses in the first three months. 4% of the $106,176,000 $362 is $4,247,054.48. When you subtract the 4%, which you've heard us mention 4% fund balance, when you subtract the 4.2 million from the unreserved undesignated of that 6,065,000 just under the green box, the district is left with $1,000,000 $818,736.52 at June 30th, 2020, for which the audit committee would make a recommendation to the entire Board of Education to return all of that to the taxpayers or put some of it into reserves or use some of it to uh, fund priority positions that were recommended at the March 11th meeting. So then you'll look under potential usage March 11th. There was a priority position discussion for uh, those who are with TRS. That was $688,558. That reflected 10 FTE positions. The bulk of that was support staff to help our students and our staff with the emotional challenges that the district is facing for our youngsters. And then there was, a, so if we just did those priority positions, it would have left a reserve balance at year end of 1,130,178.52. So then on March 11th, the Board of Education reviewed five priority positions in the employee retirement system. Those are our support staff, custodian, secretarial. Those total $233,650. So when we added in all 15, what were designated as priority positions, it left a balance left for reserve return of $896,528. So this form reflects there will be enough money at June 30th to not only keep the, your budget at a simple tax cap, but will also allow you to put in 15 priority positions and have $896,000 that you can return to reserves. That's the way the budget was currently structured for potential adoption tonight. Now, the goal was, this is based on the state aid we were told we were gonna get, and usually the district gets a wee bit more. So if we do learn that we're getting more state aid, 
then the usage of appropriated fund balance would go down and we would have more funds to give into reserves. So I, before I go on to the five-year forecast, is everybody good right now with this? Thumbs up? Okay. Question? No, I have a question. Yes, sir. Trustee Sam. Um, yeah, when, when you say, uh, when the line that reads near the bottom, approve subsequent year budget, is that talking about 2020 slash 2021? Yes, that's the 106,324,081, 10617. Uh, yes, that's that March 11th, right, that's where it was. But yes, so it'll go up a wee, well, depending on what you decide tonight. Um, yeah, I would I would suggest that you, you put the numbers in there, 2020 slash 2021, just. Okay, very good idea. Clear. I right. can do that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so when I stood before you on March 11th, along with the superintendent of schools, we wanted you to be comfortable with the fact that the budget we put before you was well thought out and was affordable for 2020, 2021, and would not put the district in a financial bind. Since the meeting on March 11th, things have gone a little bit off the rails with the state due to COVID-19. So what I would like to do is you now have another, you have a five-year financial forecast and it looks like this, it's colorful. And I want to show you how this budget plays out in the next five years. Does everybody have it? It would be titled at the top, financial forecast tab. Does everybody have that? Thumbs up if you have it. I love this thumbs up thing. This is cool. All right. Okay. Trustee Tobin, do you have yours? Okay. Okay, great. All right. So this document, it actually shows the history back from 2010-11 in the pre-tax levy year. And it reflects actual approved budgets and what we got in state aid and what we used in reserve. When you go to the, the right-hand side, you will see six years in a box. So right at the very left-hand side of that box is the 2020-2021. And, and that reflects the numbers that I just showed you on all your documents. Right there where it says 265,752, I put that in there because I wanted to show you that the simple tax cap levy limit based on the CPI, last for this current year, we are able to levy 864,555,000, ,000, but next year we're only going to be able to levy 598,803. So I wanted to show you that we actually had $265,752 less this year to stay in our simple tax cap levy. So as you follow that column all the way down, you'll see we're balanced to what was before you this evening. Let's take a look at next year. When you're sitting here and you're preparing your budget for 2022, I assumed a straight up 2% tax levy. I made that assumption. So that would be 797,613. I left the state aid at the current projections right now. When you go down, now the next block where there's a darker blue, that's usage of reserves. That first line is the employee benefit reserve. That is always contingent on how many employees we have retired and their contract benefits. So we usually just put in there 400,000. And as you look across to the right, you will see in the, all the way over to the left first, it'll say if the June 13th, 19 balance, that's where we were. So even if we're using 530019 projected currently, if I were to put in, I put in 400,000 for the outgoing five years, 
it still leaves a balance in the employee benefit reserve of 3.9 million. You'll still have that at the end of five years, give or take $100,000. Then when you look at the debt service, right now this year, we're going to use 311018. That's because we had a band premium come in and we have to return it. We have to put it up against our band. But then we know, based on our schedule, we're going to use from the debt reserve to keep all of our projects tax neutral. Then there's like 189, 406, 197, 835, 258, 252, um, and then another one, and then 141,006, which will still leave a balance in the debt reserve of $571,453 at the end of five years. Now, the workers' comp reserve, this year we're going to use 357,129. There's 215,000 left, so I projected it for next year, for the following year. This might be an area that the audit committee looks at that 896,000 left and go, you know, we want to beef up that workers' comp reserve a little bit. So we're good for at least uh, the 21, 22 year and possibly some into 22, 23. The next one is unemployment reserve. Back in 2000, we did face, um, we had to lay people off and that was a, we needed that unemployment reserve. There is no money in it. However, if tough times come around, we might consider funding that. Then we have the tax certiority reserve. This is for the Davison Road Medical Corridor. And right now we have set aside in the event they're successful and we have to pay them back taxes. That amount is 283,595. Now, if the district is successful along with the city, hopefully we don't have to pay those back taxes. But the reserve language requires regardless, if we don't use it for that, it must be returned to the general fund. And that would definitely be in 2022, 2023. Your next reserve is your health liability reserve. Currently it has $2,019,781 in the reserve. That reserve was established, it's 20% um, it's of our health spend and our budget was hovering around $10 million, so that's the $2 million. This reserve would be used in the event the district is self-funded for health insurance. And in the event something, we had astronomical expenses in any one year, the district has a $2 million reserve that it can access so as not to burden the taxpayers in any one year. Your final reserves are employee retirement and teacher retirement reserves. Currently, we are using 1,611,421. Next year, I put in for 1,011,580 and then it will leave a balance of 699,572 up to year 2022-2023. Again, the audit committee could look at that 896,000 projected at June 30th and say, you know, no, let's beef up the employee retirement TRS reserve. Let's put the money in there. So what I want the reserve picture here five years out for all of you to give you a comfort level the district will not go broke for at least three years. We weathered a 2008 tsunami, so to speak. The district does, administration does look at everything, programs. It will give us time to look at our programs, what's essential, what needs maybe needs to be more updated for the 21st century. I would like all of you as trustees to be comfortable knowing that you're not going to face bankruptcy the following next year or the year after that. I just want you to know I've got your best interest at heart. So does the superintendent and the assistant superintendent for personnel. Okay. 
So then when we file it, when we just look at <coughs> show like projected expenditure budget maximum based on those numbers, it would look in 2021, 2021, 2022. It actually looks like we'll be the head of the game by 2135 And then in 2022-23, we'll need to look to cut expenses by 2517 or hopefully get more revenue. So that is a five-year financial forecast. I use this consistently to make sure we're on track. I share it with audit committee almost every time we meet. They meet at least four times a year. So I'll open it now, Superintendent Bradley and President Linderman, for any questions. With that, uh, we will open it for questions or comments from trustees. Trustee here. Uh, um, in like that, the state says, "Oh, you know what? I I told you I'd give you this much, but now we're going to pass the budget and cut you know ten million dollars out of what we're giving you." That, that actually happened to us in 2008. We weathered the storm. But what the state did is they said, oh, I'm taking the money away from you. And then they did like the stimulus bill that was called the arrow. So in order to bridge that hurt, they gave us money in order to get us through that year, all districts. And that was the time when the Board of Education who sat here, and there's some veterans here, that's when we looked at our elementary schools and our class sizes. And we did, we did close some elementaries. And then the following year, we did look at our two middle schools and we went to an intermediate and a junior high. Um, so the state gave us enough time. They like gave us a holdover bill and they gave us enough time to adjust. Our unions also were very generous and agreeing to take minimal pay increases. I think it was just like $250 the one year they took. It was very, it was very, very minimal. So the state did allow us enough time to adjust and we were able to navigate that. And I feel we came out stronger without hurting the children, so. And then how, do we know how voting on this budget might work? Superintendent Braley, do you want to speak to that? You had a... Um, in terms of what, trustee here? Well, uh, what if uh, we can't hold regular public election? So here's what we know at this point. Um, there's indication that there will be an on-time budget, which would mark March 31st is the time the state would come out with a budget. Um, that's about all we know at this point. We're, we're hoping that whatever was given to school districts in the governor's proposed executive budget in January remains. Um, and we're even hoping that through the uh, Federal Stim Stimulus Act that school districts um, in the area of education receive even more money. But that's a hope and, and that's an uncertainty at this point. So, um, as, as Ms. Coder said, this budget was built on the figure that districts were given in January. Any more would make those adjustments as Debbie alluded to. And we are hoping for an on-time budget. So that means that between now and April 1st or April 8th, the Board of Education should really adopt a budget for 2020, 2021, because it's still the, the date for voting on school budgets remains May 19th, 2020. Now, how that vote will occur, uh, time will tell. There's some talk that the uh, boards of education with uh, tax levy limits not exceeding or piercing the cap may get authority to pass the budget. Um, or if we're back to normal, maybe there will be a, a normal public vote as there has been in the past. But right now we're planning on um, the, the May 19th budget vote one way or another. And we're also planning on hearing from the governor by March 31st on a state budget. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Trustee. <laughs> Further questions? Uh, 
Um, I have two concerns um, with this fiscal projection. Um, I could very well think the health reserve would be gone this year. That could go to zero this year uh, with the COVID-19. Um, it's projected that cases in New York are going to peak in about 14 to 21 days. Um, and those cases that become hospitalized become very expensive. Um, and it would only take a few cases among our insured to really make a debt into that uh, healthcare reserve. Um, also, um, personally, I don't have confidence that we're going to get 42 million this year from the state. Um, a huge fiscal hole was just blown in their budget. Um, they say $15 million. The stimulus that passed the Senate today includes $3 million for New York State. So that still leaves $12 million hole. Um, I don't see how that balance, that budget balances without affecting schools. I think it's unrealistic to think that it wouldn't. Did you mean million or billion? Billion. Yeah, you said million. So. I apologize. Okay, I thought you meant billion. Wishful that, thinking. That begs a question for me too. So if if we approve this budget, this is a cap on what we spend, right? Not not a floor. Correct. It is a cap. And I should point out, and Trustee Lambowser's points are well taken. I should point out um, it is a cap. And even if if the revenue it's a cap. We don't have to fill everything that's here. It gives us more weeks to make adjustments to it. Debbie, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how, how, when when uh, Trustee Lambowser was mentioning about the health care reserves, yes, uh, you explained how is it true what he said, and it, it, how is it, how does that work if there's more cases of COVID nineteen that you know I understand that there would be more costs out there, but how does that affect our budgeted number and our expenditures? Well, right now, Abley and Associates, they're our third-party consulting firm who watches our self-funded health plan. They've already established a budget for next year, and we did not need to touch that health insurance reserve because we were able, um, we've been doing well with our health plan reserve, so we didn't have to touch the two million now. In there, COVID-19, we do have a $150,000 stop loss ceiling. So not knowing with intensive care, and, and I know those can be expensive, the district would be responsible for the first $150,000 for any of our employees who might suffer serious complications from COVID-19. Of course, we hope they're all staying home and they're staying healthy, but we can't predict that. So the budget itself is already established for next year. Where that $2 million would come into play is the following year in 2022-23, Abley could come back and say, you know what, your costs skyrocketed so much. In order to keep our expenditure budget from taking the hit, we would take the money out of the reserve to level our expenditure budget. So that's what it's there for. And then hopefully be able to replenish it in following years. But that's that's how it could work. It's set up to be there as an emergency. Okay, thank you. Okay. Further questions or comments? Thanks, Heather. Kevin? Yeah, I guess my concerns would be, given the uncertainty, uh, financial implications of this. I mean, I am, I do feel better that we are returning the 895,000 and not drawing down debt to uh, to refinance. Uh, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, overall, I was good with the budget. I guess my biggest concerns would be, when is our drop dead dates? When do we have to have a budget adopted? 
And does it have, I mean, I know it doesn't have to be done today. I guess my concern would be when is our end date? I'm comfortable with this budget where it is. Um, I'm not necessarily in a rush to approve it. You know, every week that we wait, maybe we get more answers from Albany, and it's in particular in the area of state aid. But what are our drop dead dates? Your drop dead date to adopt a budget is Friday, April 24th, 2020. You have two board meetings scheduled, April 1st and April 8th. So based on your board meetings, your drop dead date is <coughs> And I think by April 8th, we want to know because we have to put together a publication, uh, the annual budget newsletter to send to the public so they're aware of the facts and figures. So um, with the board meetings scheduled as they are, um, we're looking at probably April 8th because we have a recess the following week, spring recess the following week. Correct. And it should be noted we're probably we may not be getting more revenue so what the decision will be is do we use more appropriated fund balance or do we cut the expenditure budget my thought process is and it's totally your choice if the budget stands at the dollar amount it is it doesn't mean we're going to spend it all and we're still going to look for ways that if worst case scenario happens, we don't go forward with filling some of the priority positions or some of the retirements. I, I can tell you now your revenue picture is not gonna change that much to cover this deficit that where you're using your appropriated fund balance. And I, I just have to go out there with that disclaimer. And I understand all of your concerns. And if you wanna wait, we totally support that. There's no rush, but it, I don't see it changing. The only thing I could see is changing is your total expenditure budget would go down, but it's not going to change really the revenue picture. So, no. uh, further questions, comments? Um, John. Trustee Young. So, I just, um, I, I'm also, I think we could wait just to see what the state comes up with. But um, I think I would be really nervous about cutting all of these support positions, depending on, especially given the fact that our kids are in this like tumultuous time now and they're gonna, I know we've talked, um, Superintendent Bradley has mentioned it at other meetings and that they're gonna need even more support <laughs> come next year. And so um, it, it's a tough thing to even consider cutting those support positions that are gonna be so desperately needed, especially next year. So um, I guess that we can just hope that we do get the money from the state that they said they were gonna give us and hope that things, you know, aren't as dire as they are appearing to be in the news. <laughs> but, you know, sunshine rainbows, guys, that's, that's my take. <laughs> Comments? Um, I, I have a couple. Um, I, I'm fine with this budget too. I, I think administration and uh, putting their heads together <coughs> with our faculty and staff, uh, principals have come up with a, a tremendous budget to meet the needs of our, our students. And a lot of these positions are to help the most needy students in our district. Um, Heather, it's, it's kind of funny because every year we talk about uh, the, the days when we flew blind. Um, we would approve a budget and not have any idea what we were gonna receive from the state. And today that might be what we're looking at. We don't know. Um, but I, I, I'm comfortable with this budget. I, I don't think it's a, a time for us to panic and start um, cutting this budget. Um, that's not to say that next year there might not be some tough decisions that this board will have to make. But I also think um, based on the economic outlook and what is going on, um, my hope is that we do receive what we're planning on getting. I really don't think we're going to get more money, but get what we anticipate. And 
I don't think there's any harm in waiting until after the state budget comes in. Hopefully that'll come in April 1st, we meet next week and we might have a clearer outlook as to what um, our aid will look like. So I, I don't have a problem with the budget, but I also think it's uh, wise for us to wait and see what the state does with the finance or with this um, state aid. Further questions, comments? So, so will we need to table this then till that meeting if we if that's what we're all kind of thinking or how would that work exactly? We would have to table if that's what the board wants to do. If the board is more comfortable tabling this motion, we would table it until April 1st. And if we still don't have answers, we come back April 8th and we can revisit it April 8th. Correct. So you have a motion and a second, and you're in discussion at the moment about the 2020 21 expenditure budget. At this time, if it's someone would make a motion to take it until April 1st, we have to put the date up there. And then somebody would have to second that motion. There would be a vote. And then we do a vote to come out of that motion, the original motion. So if that is the trustee's wishes, I, we just, <clears throat> I just think somebody to make a motion to table, take the date, and a second. I will ask for a motion to table this. Um, my recommendation, and again, I'll defer to the board, is to go till April 1st because we can always move to April 8th if we need. So to. moved. Uh, what's the, uh, does Trustee Fiegel need to give us the date? Or uh, this is what you suggested. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, motion. Second. Trustee Fiegel, second by Trustee Sandell. Roll call to table the motion. Yes, Trustee Fiegel. Aye. Trustee Hare. Aye. Trustee Kershaw. Aye. Trustee Lambalzer. Aye. Trustee Pratt. Aye. Trustee Sandell. Aye. Trustee Tobin. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. President Linderman. Aye. Okay, the motion to table hit till April 1st has passed. Yes. And then we just need a motion to get out of the discussion, the original motion. Okay, now I. We've got a motion, we just need the vote to get out of the Okay, original. I now need a vote to get out of the original motion. Well, we already have the motion, and we and just we, need the roll call now. Okay. Um, I everybody, I as I call your name, you're going to respond to come out of the original motion on the budget in discussion. So, Trustee Fiegel? Aye. Trustee Hare? Aye. Trustee Kershaw? Aye. Trustee Lambelzer? Aye. Trustee Pratt? Aye. Trustee Sandell? Aye. Trustee Tobin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. President Lindemann? Aye. Thank you. Motion is carried. Now I just have to find my agenda, guys. We can now move on to personnel matters appointment, resignations, and other. We have one through three dated March 12, 2020. Motion, please. So moved. Trustee Hare, I need a second. Second. Trustee Tobin. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Force, of habit. Force of habit, guys. Trustee Eagle? Aye. Trustee Hare? Aye. Trustee Kershaw? Aye. Trustee Lambholzer? Aye. Trustee Pratt? Aye. Trustee Sandell? Aye. Trustee Tobin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. President Enderman? Aye. Motion passed. I now need a motion to approve 4 through 11, dated March 18th, 2020. Motion. So forward. moved. So moved. Um, Trustee Kershaw, I need a second. Second. Trustee Young. Discussion. Ms. Scoda, roll call, please. Trustee Fiegel. Aye. Trustee Hare. Aye. Trustee Kershaw. Aye. Trustee Lambelzer. Aye. Trustee Pratt. 
Aye. Trustee Sandell? Aye. Trustee Tilden? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. President Aye. Motion is carried. Uh, now I need a motion to approve, I believe it was 12 D. Dated March 24th, 2020. So President Linderman, there's also a 13 on that personnel report on the back. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, number 13. We have 12 D and 13 dated March 24th, 2020. We had discussed this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so a motion to approve 12 D and number 13 dated March 24th, 2020. Motion, please. No move. Trustee Hare. Second. Second. Trustee Kershaw. This is like a game of whack-a-mole. I feel like I want to pick this up and just hit you guys with it. <laughs> we have a motion. We have a second. Discussion. Ms. Cota, roll call, please. Trustee Fiegel? Aye. Trustee Hare? Aye. Trustee Kershaw? Aye. Trustee Lambalzer? Aye. Trustee Pratt? Aye. Trustee Sandell? Aye. Trustee Tobin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. President Linderman? Aye. Motion has carried. C, educational services. One, rescind the approval for the following field trips. A, the North Park High School eighth graders to Washington, D.C. And B, Lockport High School DECA to Nashville, Tennessee. I need a motion, please. Motion. Uh, Trustee Pratt, second. Trustee Tobin, discussion. Is this allowing those trips to take place? It's rescinding them. We're rescinding the trips, Trustee. I was just going okay. to add, we're being rescinded with the COVID-19 situation and uh, travel restrictions and just good judgment. Yep. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. Further discussion? Mrs. Coder, roll call, please. Trustee Fiegel? Aye. Trustee Hare? Aye. Trustee Kershaw? Aye. Trustee Lambalzer? Aye. Trustee Pratt? Aye. Trustee Sandell? Aye. Trustee Young? <coughs> Aye. I was looking at your name to Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Linderman. Uh, President. Oh that, that's I okay. See your rational comment. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh my gosh. He is still a trustee too, though. I know he is. You're Thank absolutely you, right. I'm, I'm one of the guys. I know. One of the gang. <laughs> oh man. D. Uh, special needs matters. I need a motion to approve one committee on preschool special education and two committee on special education. Motion, please. So moved. Uh, Trustee Young, second. Second. Trustee Fiegel. Discussion? No Aye. discussion. I need a roll call vote, Mrs. Coder. Trustee Fiegel? Aye. Trustee Hare? Trustee Aye. Hare. Okay. Aye. Aye. She's thinking about Rocky Mac. <laughs> Trustee Kershaw? Aye. Trustee Lambalzer? Aye. Trustee Pratt? Aye. Trustee Sandell? Aye. Trustee Tobin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trust President Linderman? Aye. Motion has carried. Uh, next item on our agenda tonight is legislative update. Trustee here, you sent us an update. I'm not going to put you in a position to have to go through that. Um, but if there are, if you, anything you want to add or say, or if there's any questions, we'll, we'll address those now. 
Um, I just I just wanted to add that in one of the the status on one of the bills was that it was in a third reading, and um, Trustee Sadell had a question about that. I have replied back, but basically, um, in in the assembly, there are three readings before they can um, move on to vote and then pass it to the other house. Um, so I sent a link to. Um, to their process, the rules, and uh, just a quick explanation of how that works. It, it happens very quickly. It's like 24 hours in between each reading, so it, and then they usually vote right away. So it was kind of a funny status to give you guys. I don't usually have that one to give you. So that's that's it. There's, um, there's bigger work going on than these bills right now, so I think uh, that's why there wasn't a lot to report this, this month. Thanks for that explanation. I appreciate it. No problem. Further comments or discussion? Okay, thank you. Uh, board President's comments, I, I'm just gonna keep it real simple. I just wanna thank everybody um, for the time and effort you guys have put in during this difficult time. This is just something that we could never ever have imagined happening. And uh, I do appreciate everything everyone's doing. And um, I do appreciate everything our, our staff, our teachers, everyone um, has pitched in. And we have gotten rave reviews from the public uh, as to how we're handling this. And again, um, it's a two minute. Thank you. And with that, um, I am going to go to committee of the hall. Um, if anyone has anything to say, we'll start with uh, Trustee Fiegel. Uh, just that, uh, sorry that I haven't been around, but my time was cut short. I'm in isolation, uh, self-imposed because of uh, being around a lot of people at the uh, train terminal and whatnot. But I would uh, like to thank Martha and Kyle for being on that committee. I feel very confident that when they meet, that we have two people that understand the situation as it's presented to that committee and they understand everything coming out of the uh, Albany uh, offices. Uh, again, thank you folks for, for putting yourself out there and uh, being on the front lines. That's it. Thank you, Trustee Fiegel. Trustee Hare. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope that I don't get choked up saying this, but um, last Monday, when our district pulled together and I, the amount of work that must have gone into making the schools, that all of the teachers got together on Friday and then again on Monday and packets were ready for kids, their um, iPads or whatever they needed at home to continue educating um, the, the meals coordination and not just having pickup points, but also to take the tech mobile into those areas where people may not have cars to come and pick up the food. I just, I was crying at my desk as I was seeing all of this come through. I am so proud of this district and how it cares for its community and not just our kids, but knowing how important it was to have everybody go home and stay home to keep the spread down. I'm just I couldn't be more proud. So thank you to everybody in the district for all the hard work they've done. It's it's incredible. So that's all. Thank you, Trustee Hare. Thank you. Now we're all crying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Trustee Tobin. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for everything they've done. Um, I grew up in a very small town and to see a community come together there is just what we did. Everybody knows everybody, and we were all a big family, and I never thought that I would experience that in such a large city um, and school district, but I uh, cannot be more proud to be a resident of Lockport, to be a parent of Lockport students, and to serve on this board. There is no other district that I would rather be in right now. So thank you. Thank you. Trustee Sandell. Had to come off mute. Um, yeah, I'd like to echo the comments they made. The district did a phenomenal job. Um, kudos to uh, Superintendent Bradley. I know that was just, uh, I mean, all hands on deck and uh, br bringing the troops together and, and executing in a, in a very caring and uh, passionate way. Uh, 
uh, really my hats off to you on that. A um, couple couple things. I, I, I'd like to ask that um, I, I've read different things about the petition process and how, how we're going to go forward with electing new board members. They said they might even uh, waive the vote uh, for board members and, and allow everybody to go through another year without having to vote. I mean, that sounds extreme to me, but you know, that could happen. Um, I guess, uh, you know, if anybody hears anything, if you could just communicate to all of us, uh, I'd, I'd be interested to hear how, how that could play out. And then um, policy committee, just want to mention this, that we, we've got to pack it out. Um, I, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to read through the policies, but we're, we're trying, we're going to try and put together a, a meeting to, uh, go over it. Uh, the 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 one policy looks like it's uh, pretty large uh, in in scope. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to play out in, a, in in something like this, but we might need Rob's help to do that. Um, anyway, Lisa, do you have any comment about that? No, I will uh, send out some potential dates and times um, based on what Ed just shared. So. Okay, thank you for your help and your support. That's it. Thank you, Trustee Sandow. Trustee Young. So I too wanna just talk about how amazing everyone here is. Um, I was here for a couple of leadership meetings, I guess we would call them that, because that's all I saw at those meetings. I don't know if they're technically, uh, what you would technically call them, but they were all the um, kind of the heads of the departments and, and everything. And everyone, it was amazing how many people just said, we'll do whatever, we'll do whatever it takes. We've got all the volunteers, all of our employees, everybody's willing to do whatever needs to be done. And it was no question. There wasn't a question about uh, who, who does what, when, or what do I have to? It was, it was just, and it made it so much more seamless, almost seemingly seamless. Of course it wasn't. There's so much work behind the scenes that went into it, but it, to the general public, they, it was great. I mean, everything is great. The kids are interacting with their teachers. The teachers are interacting with each other. Um, the kids are getting their meals. Uh, it, it's just the amount of work that went into something that who would have ever thought that any of us would have to do. It was, um, it was just really, it's great to see. And obviously we're not done. We've still got to keep working. And I think I, I have full confidence that we're going to continue to be very successful. And um, just thank you to everyone. Thank you, Trustee Young. Trustee Lambauser. Um, two brief things. Um, as a parent, I just wanted to echo some of the comments already. I think um, my kids were just so well prepared on such short notice. And I have heard nothing but great things about how those uh, very difficult situations happened and uh, <clears throat> very difficult to get those kids to do the work some days, but it, it's worked out well. And that is a debt of gratitude to the teachers and staff in every single building. Um, and secondly, um, I need to bring thanks from Eastern Niagara for the donation and that hits close to home. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Lambauser. Trustee Kershaw. So I'd also like to echo what people have said. I, again, as a parent, I'm truly <clears throat> impressed with what my daughter has to work on. And she's the kid that was like, hey, I get to do this? All right. So we're not having any issues with her doing stuff. In fact, she's figured out, she's sort of gamed the system to figure out how she can get days off in all of this by doing extra work. Um, but it's amazing how engaged these her, she is or the work that she's gotten is and how there's, you know, the interaction, the immediate responses from the teachers. And I've heard only positive things from other parents. Um, I, I too, I am humbled by the work that has been done. And I have to, I have to point out that I have family members in other parts of the country where the school districts have not done this. They literally, the kids have no work and they're just sitting and not, they're losing time. And so I think it's impressive that we're, working so hard to at least maintain. Um, and I do know, I do wanna say that many of the teachers have said that they miss their kids and I think they're doing things to try to connect with their kids. And that's really special that, you know, the relationship <laughs> isn't just one way. These teachers are really um, invested in these kids in such a way. 
I also want to do something off topic because March is actually Athletic Trainers Month and Social Work Month. So I wanted to take a second. One of the first things I heard when I came into the district was all about our athletic trainers and, and Rosie in particular. And I apologize, I can never remember the name of um, our other person. So I apologize for not naming her specifically. But, you know, those two people have been, uh, again, by first names, everyone seems to know who they are. And our social workers are gonna be so important through this as well as so important on the tail end of this in providing support to our kids. So I just wanna take a, a minute to, in addition to recognizing kind of everybody recognize those two groups. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Kershaw. Trustee Pratt. I'm going to make this very quick because I just got a signal. My battery's dying on my computer. I want to thank <laughs> President Linderman for bringing this board into the 2020s to be able to sit at home and have a meeting, not have to cancel a meeting. And I know, John, there's people behind you, behind the scenes that work to make it possible for guys like myself and Trustee Fiegel to be able to take care of ourselves but still be engaged and involved. And I appreciate the efforts. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I do want to take credit for all of this. Um, I just want to make a uh, Trustee Pratt. Uh, I, I had the privilege of talking to Trustee Pratt yesterday, uh, whether he was coming to this meeting or not, and whether he was going to be able to hook up for re to be remote. And he told me as long as his 12-year-old granddaughter was available, he would be online. <laughs> hey, guess who was over to visit Papa this afternoon? <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Pratt. <laughs> and with that, um, we're going to go to superintendent's comments. <laughs> Thank you, President Linderman. I do have quite a lengthy statement this evening, but it's because there are so many people to thank, and I also want to use this time to update the community on the status of COVID-19 in the Lockport City School District. This evening, we sit together in a very different environment than we did during the last Board of Education meeting on Wednesday, March 11th, 2020. Although we have been physically apart since then and officially apart since Monday, March 16th, 2020, there is no doubt that the Lockport City School District Learning Community continues to work together through the COVID-19 situation. First of all, many, many thanks to all of the employees of the Lockport City School District and RMR Food Services for collaborating with colleagues, demonstrating compassion, expressing concern, and displaying care for each other, students, and families, and remaining calm in a time of turbulence and uncertainty. Since schools were directed to close last week, alternative electronic and non-electronic instructional plans were developed by teachers and distributed to students Close to 18,000 meals had been provided to families and our nurses did a phenomenal job of returning necessary medication for students to their parents. Schools will be closed through March 31st, 2020. Sometime soon, it is expected that Governor Cuomo will announce if the status of school closings in New York State is extended. In the meantime, we are encouraging parents to stay connected with your child's teacher and principal through email and by checking our website and other social media accounts for the most recent updates and changes. Learning experiences for our students have been designed to maintain foundational skills and reduce any regression in learning. It is important for students to keep a daily routine, find time for physical activity, engage in reading and writing, and wash your hands frequently. Teachers and administrators under the direction of Mrs. Hall are working to develop the next block of, block of lessons in the event that school closure is extended. The third quarter officially closes on April 3rd. Teachers and principals are now discussing how to report student progress to parents for the six weeks of learning that was captured during the third quarter of school. As many of you are aware, New York State testing in grades three through eight has been suspended for this school year. Now, an obvious and burning question exists, and that is, how will Regents exams be handled? At this time, the New York State Education Department is continuing to closely monitor the situation and will provide guidance 
on the Regents' examinations in the near future. The New York State Department of Education and New York's nine public television stations announced expanded educational resources and learn at home programming. It's now available to ensure equitable access to home learning. Thank you to Trustee Hare for her involvement in this welcomed initiative. In addition to providing instruction and food, the Lockport City School District, in collaboration with the YWCA of Niagara, has opened a child care program at John Pound Early Childhood Center. The service was created with an emphasis on providing a program to children of first responders and health care workers. The program is located at 51 High Street, and interested parents may contact the YWCA of Niagara for more information. This evening, the Board of Education authorized the donation of personal protective equipment and other supplies to Eastern Niagara Hospital. Items include such things as goggles, sanitizer, gowns, and masks. These items were taken from our high school science classrooms, nurses' clinics, and our custodial department. Several teachers, administrators, custodians, and nurses helped to gather these items and deliver them to the hospital. At this time, I would like to extend thanks to our local first responders and healthcare workers for their intense efforts to keep all people in Lockport safe and healthy. A special thanks to trustees Lambalzer and Kershaw, who are both nurses. The Lockport City School District may, in the near future, become a site for an upcoming blood drive. Space for blood drives across the state has been requested by Governor Cuomo. We welcome the experience. While only essential staff are allowed in school buildings, the Lockport City School District custodial members have been cleaning and disinfecting school facilities to be ready to open when school reopens, and we hope that day comes soon. This situation is truly evolving day to day and quite often hour by hour. In this time of uncertainty, it is important to remain steady, calm, and place the health and safety of all people first and foremost. Lockport City School District Administration is committed to staying on top of the latest developments, directives, and recommendations from federal, state, and local officials and agencies, and stands ready to respond as quickly as possible when the situation changes. These adjustments and actions will be based on specific and reliable information rather than speculation. Through our all hands on deck, all hearts open wide, and all heads together model, we will continue to overcome seemingly impossible obstacles to ensure that children are cared for and that real learning continues and the needs of our community are considered. Pride in our past, faith in our future, at some point in time, we will look back to the past and what we lived through, realizing that we pushed through in order to keep the Lockport City School District moving forward for a strong future for our children. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay lying strong, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bradley. <laughs> uh, Trustee Fiegel, I'm, I'm glad you did that because uh, before we adjourn, uh, I just want to acknowledge again uh, the tremendous leadership Mrs. Bradley has provided to this district. Um, she has been in the forefront of everything that we have done. And as she said, she has stayed on top of it. I don't know how she does. 24-7, um, guys, is what uh, she's running right now. And um, she's been available to provide information and updates. And uh, we are extremely fortunate to have you as our superintendent. Thank you. And with that, do I have someone else? Uh, with that, I need a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. So moved. So, uh, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, a lot of seconds. Uh, Trustee Hare, uh, Trustee Pratt, I think, was in there first for the second. What? what? No. Trusty hair. I, that's not. That's not what I heard. That's not what I heard. All right. Trusty <laughs> hair was first though with the motion. Yes. Trusty Tolman. Trusty Young. I rescind my second. <laughs> I, I rescind my second. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm here in person, so I got to go with the person who's there. It's safer. <laughs> I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, Mrs. Coder, discussion. Roll call. Trustee Fiegel. Yes. I whatever. Trustee <laughs> here. Hi, and I, I just want to say that it was great to see you all and see that, that you're doing well. Thank you. Trustee Kershaw? Aye. Trustee Aye. Trustee Sandel? Aye, and I'd like to say that I was happy that Kevin's computer battery lasted. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not its last leg. <laughs> I, and also, I just got to pop up that my Chromebook is about to die. So I'm glad we. Yeah. Aye. Aye. With that, we are adjourned. Bye, Thank everyone. You, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. How'd they even hear me? Great job, you guys. I've never heard me through yours. <laughs> Rob, thanks again. We have, we have 13 people watching us. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, yeah.